it's good that he can do that. It opens up possibilities if we can load up um, those light poles, a ready-made um, antenna in a lot of sporting grounds. So that's great. An attempt to load up a tall light pole. I'm using a loop made of 20 metres of insulated wire. About a third of that is running parallel to the tall light pole, with it being supported with a squid pole. It's a makeshift arrangement, only decided on the spur of the moment. So it's difficult to keep the wire near the light pole, which would probably be desirable for tight coupling. What I'll do, I'll just tie the wire so that it's tightly coupled. The antenna I'm using now is a 26 metre long light pole that I'm trying to load up with a feed loop of around seven metres parallel to it. So I'm using two squid poles to hold the loop. One edge I'm trying to keep parallel as parallel as possible to the edge of the light pole. I'm not using any ground. But so I've just got a loop connected to the transceiver, both the uh, antenna and earth connection. So Over to you, Steve. Got your dodger. Okay. <clears throat> Very good signal from you, Peter. Certainly doing a powerful job here. You're, you're 20 dB over 9. Um, and extremely good audio, as uh, Clint mentioned earlier on. Well, you can fix it, there's probably old worries worrying about because you don't go down there all that often. Listening to the ABC News yesterday about the CFA's digital radio system. I think some of these people that order these things are not quite up to date with how they actually work. This is the coupling loop. Running a bit along the ground, that's undesirable, and the transceiver should probably be close to the pole. I'll just follow the wire, if you can't see it, it's near where my hand is. I've just got it twisted half a turn around the pole, not intended but just because there's a catch here. And all this bit here, it runs right up against the pole and then it goes up to the squid pole, which you can see there's a gap at the top of the pole, it should really be held with something a bit tighter than this that would keep it hard up against the pole and anyway it goes across to you, know, you can see the wire in the breeze goes to the top of another squid pole that's just on an adjacent fence and then that goes back to the transceiver yes, I'll, uh, I'll pay particular attention to the roses so one end connects the, to the antenna the connection the, the other the to the earth I can get a dim light with the aerial loading at one extreme, so I'm possibly not tuned up very well. Pop it across to you, Kevin. Looks like it's going to be a nice day. Might be a barbecue day. We'll see. VK3CKL to take it. This is VK3HK. Yeah, good luck with the barbecue there, Steve. VK3HK, VK3CKL and... Uh... The next experiment was to connect the ground tuning unit in series with the antenna connection. That is the loop that I'm using to feed into the light pole. That produced a brighter light on the transceiver's indicator. Peter, you're 
year popped up to be about 10 over 9 CVK3CSJ, VK3CKL. Yeah, no, problem, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, VK3CSJ, yes, good signal here, uh, uh, Kevin, you're uh, kicking up over the 40 mark. Mr. Y.E., loading up the light pole, the way you're doing it is working fantastically. Uh, you're uh, 25 over 9 now and uh, kicking up to 30 on modulation. So uh, that's the strongest signal I've, I think I've seen from you even when you had the, the kite going uh, several years ago. Um, <laughs> I remember your signal wafting around the 20 over 9 mark, but... Uh, no, she's uh, she's 25 to 30 over, so uh, but I'd, I'd suggest taking that light pole home with you and uh, using that from home. CQ, CQ, CQ. 